everyone, Tom Fredrickson here with the Victorian Woodshop. This video is going to concern itself with milk painting. Now we here are an authorized distributor from the Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company. I've been using this product for, gosh, going on 12-15 years now. It's absolutely the best, most authentic paint you can get your hands on. And I know it's a little bit different and many of you are unfamiliar with exactly what milk paint is. So I thought I'd go ahead and do a little video to show you how you milk paint and explain some of the processes. Now up until the turn of the century, milk paint always came in a powdered form. It's the exact same paint that was used all the way back to the pyramids and even some cave drawings they're saying. And then around the turn of the century when plastics came in the market, you started seeing oil-based paints. And the milk paint sort of went its own way. Well, when you're doing restoration work, colonial, shaker furniture, particularly Victorian work, you want to use authentic paints. And they all came in powdered form. And what I brought out today is some barn red. It's a nice bright one. It should show up in the video real well. And all you do is when the package comes, go ahead and empty it. I like mason jars, regular old canning mason jars. And you should have some around, but any old peanut butter jar will do. Pour the powder in. A little goes a long way. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and paint a shelf. And that's a pretty good sized shelf. And you certainly don't need much. I'm going to put in about a uh, oh, spoon and a half maybe. Ah, I'm going to go full two spoons because I don't want to run out just because we're doing the video. Put the lid back on the jar. Trust me, this is something I learned. You don't want to make the same mistake. Now ordinarily I'll do this at the kitchen sink or somewhere where there's a faucet. You want to use warm water. It helps it uh, mix up. And I brought a little warm water with me. And I'm just going to put in just a little bit, just a trickle, just to kind of get a little paste going, get a little thick and kind of lumpy, kind of like when they're making bread and stuff. Then a little more. There we go. And we're starting to get a nice Nice loose mix down there. It's the spoon's starting to go real well. Now I saw a documentary once where they were recreating the frescoes, you know, the type that Michelangelo did and all that, and they're, they're making new frescoes. And they wanted to be as authentic as possible. So of course they're using milk paint. And I remember the guy, this is kind of when I first got into it, it was about 20 years ago. And they were talking about it, mixing it fresh every day. All the different colors, all those old painters used to do, and they get up in their backs and, and paint the frescoes. There we go. And I'm kind of trying to get a consistency, kind of like pea soup. Real thick, not too thick that you can't stick a brush in it and paint it, but you don't want it runny either. No paint is supposed to be a nice, thick, rich paint. And sit and stir it for a couple of minutes. But getting on with it. Now, it dries a little differently than some of the oil paints that you're used to. And the oil paints you go down to the hardware store and buy, you put them on with a foam brush or whatever, and they dry perfectly smooth and flat, and they're beautiful. But that's not the way furniture used to be back in the last few centuries. Milk paint is based with a lime and milk protein and regular earth pigments. So it's completely all natural, and in various parts of the country, different earth pigments would have been in the ground, iron oxides and the such. And that's why you get some different colors in different parts of the country. Now see, this is getting nice and, I hope that shows up in the video, kind of nice and thick. And you cannot over stir it. Uh, a lot of times I will put my wife in charge of being the paint stirrer. Because frankly, she has a lot more patience than I do on this. But since we're doing a video, we're going to go ahead and take our time to do it. Now, you can mix this with some of the Snow White and get a little bit of a lighter color. Or you could mix in a black with a red and get a different color entirely. So that's what the Snow White's for. Now, you have to put this on bare, untreated wood. You can't put it over paint. If you're going to put it over paint, you have to use some additives and things, which I can go ahead and set you up with, but this primarily we're concerned with painting raw wood. So if you pick up an unfinished pine dresser or a shelf or something you're making or some trim uh, around your living room or along the top of the walls or the such, something like that. Alright, that's good enough. Now this dries 
hard as a rock. So you got to make sure you wash that spoon off. I've gotten in more trouble than that over the years as possible. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and change the camera angle a little bit because we're getting ready to start painting so it's more focused down here. And then we'll switch back to some closing remarks. Let's talk about brushes just a little bit. Foam brushes, you can use it. And it'll make it a nice smoother finish, you know, less streaks, less, less uh, of the character of milk paint. But in my opinion, what's the point? Um, if, you, if you want to do real smooth type things, you should be using the modern oil-based latex type paint. So we're just going to throw that brush away. Milk paint should be applied with a true bristle brush. And I do keep them in stock. I just buy them at the hardware store in bulk. And it'll save you a trip to the hardware store. If you look on the web page, you'll see that I've got a little pair of the true bristle brushes. You can buy both of them for a buck and a half. Just save yourself a trip. Or any brush that you've got laying around the house. And here's another little hint. I always pull on them like this and get any loose little threads out of the way so they don't uh, get in your milk paint. And remember, we just used a couple of tablespoons, and I'll probably have three times as much as I need. As far as coats go, <clears throat> I have never milk painted anything that required more than one coat. And I think that's why this milk paint goes so far. I'm going to guess, if I, out of a pint of paint, which I sell in the pints, uh, I could probably paint about 20 of these type of shells, if not more. And you can use milk paint on walls. And I may go ahead and start carrying that paint. It's just a little bit different of a mixture, but it's basically the same price. Well, no, actually it would be cheaper because you could get that in gallons. And of course, the uh, larger the quantity that you purchase it in, the, uh, the less it is overall. But for the most cases, a pint. Boy, this will last you for a long time. See, it's looking really nice already.